इस लास्ट मिनट रश इफ पीपल गेट इन टू अ पैटर्न ऑफ ओनली बींग प्रोडक्टिव ड्यूरिंग लास्ट मिनट रश दैन इट इज़ वेरी बैड इट कैन हैव अ ह्यूज इम्पैक्ट ऑन देयर इम्यून सिस्टम एंड एवरी टाइम आई सी अ बर्न आउट पेशेंट एंड वैन आई टेक देयर हिस्ट्री बैक टू एटलीस्ट लास्ट सिक्स टू टेन मंथस दे विल से दे हैव बीन ऑलवेज ऑन अ लास्ट मिनट रश एंड दैट हैव इवेंचुअली कॉम्पाउंडेड एंड लेट टू दिस बर्न आउट कंडीशन इवन अदरवाइज लास्ट मिनट रश इज नॉट समथिंग दैट इज़ हेल्थी एस वी ऑल नो आवर ब्रेन के नॉट डिफ्रेंशिएट वॉट इज रियल एंड वॉट इज परसिव्ड सेम वे वी के नॉट डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन वॉट इज रियल थ्रेट एंड परसिव्ड थ्रेट बिकॉज आवर बॉडीज रिस्पॉन्स विल बी द सेम सो लास्ट मिनट रश इज लाइक अगेन पुटिंग अ डेड लाइन यू नीड टू गेट थिंग्स क्विक यू डोंट हैव टाइम एंड इफ यू डोंट डू दैट यू आर यू नो फेसिंग सम रियल थ्रेट इट कुड बी यू नो यू हैव टू रीच योर डेस्टिनेशन ऑन टाइम एंड यू लेफ्ट वेरी लेट और दर इज अ ट्रैफिक सो सडनली दर इज अ परसिव थ्रेट वो इफ आई रीच लेट दर इज अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स दैट इज गो गो रॉन्ग एंड आई मैट हैव टू रीस्केड्यूल द एंटायर डे एंड हाउ आम आई गोन टू कोप विद दैट सो दर इज इज परसिव थ्रेट एंड एन इमेजिनेशन दैट इज पुटिंग यू यू आर गोइंग टू बी इन रियल ट्रबल सो वॉट हैपन्स इन दिस पॉइंट नेचुरली आवर ब्रेन टेल्स वी आर इन स्ट्रेसफुल सिचुएशन एंड वी गेट इन टू दैट फाइट ऑफ फ्लाइट मोड सो नेचुरली द द एड्रीनल ग्लैंड रिलीज कॉटिसॉल epinephrine not epinephrine and all these hormones what it does it gives you lot of energy on your hands legs to your brain and your heart rate goes up your blood pressure can also go up because you are in a alert mode you need to survive but on the consequence on on the other side apart from that your immune system takes a hit your kidneys will be functioning not so efficiently how it used to your liver function will not be as efficient as it used to because energy is diverted to other survival method now the best example i give is when you are in a survival mode your more energy is re- released for your thinking ability to think fast you know which what decision should i take because you are always on an alert mode and you are on an high olympic athlete kind of a performance ready person because a lot of energy is released blood circulation is released to your legs and your arms so when this happens at that time body is not concerned about waste management or you know your sewage treatment that is happening inside the body for example liver kidneys lymphatic drainage and you are breathing quickly and your digestion will also take a hit but when we keep doing this on a regular basis and then what happens like the pavlovian dog you know the dog starts salivating when Uh, when the researcher ivan pavlov he kept food and he rang a bell in front of the dog again he kept the food and rang the bell third time there is no food just the bell and the dog starts salivating because the dog started correlating the food and bell as something to do with food and satiation so just with the bell oh i always heard the bell when there was food so that means bell means i should be ready to, uh, some food is going to come right now so what happens when people st- eventually get into the habit of last minute rush they think that i can only perform in last minute rush and then this becomes a real problem and then what happens maybe they become efficient and then some people what they do is they consciously create a last minute rush last minute deadline so that they are able to perform better and then this becomes a conscious or unconscious pattern and that will make people you know when there is something there is no last minute rush they become very unproductive people become uh, very productive only if there is last minute rush and if there is no last minute rush they feel very bored and they feel there is nothing else to do and they become very like what is the purpose of me doing all of this so then what happens they will not be able to work in a sane structured situation they always need a situation where there is a lot of drama maybe even at home they will unconsciously start creating lot of drama they might miss out something so they have this last minute fire fight or flight situation so <clears throat> it's a trained method this last minute rush and many people fall prey to this situation so what happens when you do this over a lot of time like for 6 <clears throat> months 10 months and then it becomes 2 3 years then suddenly patient complains i'm having high blood pressure patient complains i am having too much cravings because in last minute rush you release a lot of adrenaline and cortisol and when there is a dip you tend to crave for sugar because that reduces a lot of sugar and also 
more cortisol will also spike your glucose and that will have a dip later on so overall you are compromising your hormonal balance and then it will also make you not so alert when it things are normal so you are like i need some drama i need some last minute rush only then i can be productive otherwise i am not able to do anything in the normal stage so that's why we always tell people getting comfortable with boring things you know finding novelty in boring things that's the way you start and how to do that start with 5 to 10 minutes of just observing your breath and start to eat without any distractions reduce your need for ent- mindless entertainment some people even do this uh, method of just looking at the wall for 5 10 minutes and just observing that you know your own thoughts and doing nothing so when that happens you tend to acclimatize to small small novelty that will entertain you it's like you know when you keep on eating sugar you need more sugar to appreciate sugar same way then then what happens your stress level to handle more and more last minute rush will go up and then you think that oh suddenly i feel so alive when there is a last minute rush and actually it is not the real aliveness it is the aliveness because of excess cortisol that you consciously creating which is not healthy for the long run so that's why learn to you know create small small you can also create last minute rush in a healthier manner how i how do we do that so i i know some of my friends so during my school i was a last minute rush when it comes to studying i always studied at the end because i felt that oh whenever i study at the end i can grasp very easily and i perform well in exams sometimes it has also gone the other way around when i have also seen my some of my best friends they are like top scorers scorers in class so how they do it they keep a schedule by this time i have to finish this by this time i have to finish this two weeks prior to the exams i have to be done with all the portions and then these two weeks i'm just going to chill and revise it at a leisurely time and they have a different retention of whatever they studied and when i whenever i studied things in the last minute i forget it immediately it's just like drawing on water how we say it but when people study it and review it and again review it and they feel confidence in going to exam so somewhere we need to reach have that benchmark like getting things done in a effortless easy manner where it's okay to wait some people say oh i don't want to go so early to the airport and wait there but they get so stressed in the traffic and there are multiple uh, i i need to check the study but people say when they leave late and when they you know press the accelerator full throttle and rash drive they save not more than 4 5 minutes and just for that 4 5 minutes they are risking their death so actually half an hour of relaxed time in the airport or in the railway station before you catch the train or the flight or even if you spend you could do a lot of calls or you could read something or you could just chill people are feeling i am finding it very bored so that's why last minute rush creates more trouble for your heart rate for your heart health for your hormonal health and for your mental stress and it becomes very difficult for you to sleep at night even though you feel you're alive you're alert and people have this notion last minute rush means i am super alert and i'm somewhere i have this energy that i never had but that is not the energy that we need we need that energy when things are normal and calm we need to make comfort and boredom i mean we need to find comfort in that boring things that we do on a regular basis and find that novelty there and that comes with slowing down and that's why the statement you know we slow down to go faster so that's the approach that we need to understand so i used to get a lot of these questions is it possible to be creative when things are sane and in structure and normal so i have seen artists working in both sides like i've seen artists who perform best in their when there is a last minute rush or when they're going through a lot of drama in their personal life i've also seen artists especially some musicians who work best when they are normal sane and structured and they don't like last minute rush they have the other approach they think if a last minute rush happens they will not be able to do the right thing so they prepare things way in advance so again it's just the mindset of both of them and there is no clear guarantee that last minute rush can make a person creative but last minute rush will make a person energetic 
followed with a dip of their energy so at that time maybe there are people who get certain things done but it's just their pavlovian dog analysis they train themselves to get into that pattern and sometimes uh, i've seen artists when they go through a emotional drama in their life could be death of somebody or breakup or some issues in their family they tend to become very artistic and creative at that time because somewhere that pain and that or a feeling of rejection is channelized into something very artistically you know articulating in a very expression that's the, the art that they are using at the same time i have seen people who are very observant so it's a very um, you can correlate many things and say you have seen artists who are in pain and in last minute who can create and you have also seen artists who are who works best under no pressure so definitely for a long term health working not under pressure and still being able to because they have this intrinsic motivation that itself creates a low grade pressure to perform the other people they need some extrinsic pressure so without that i will not be able to so it is give, making them feel accountable so both are creating pressure but it's just from where this pressure is coming from so you need to learn to give that intrinsic pressure no i wish to complete that i wish to do that and i wish to go through that process of maybe it's not a last minute but i still want to engage in that process so that's where we need to continue so every time i see patients with pcos or burnout or hormonal imbalances even thyroid imbalances i always go back and check do you have a tendency to have a last minute rush only then you become productive i tell them somehow you need to reverse that tendency learn to be productive even without last minute rush you know be have a new identity that you get things done way in advance and you don't like that last minute adrenaline but the whole society we love that last minute rush even when you watch a game whether it's cricket or football when somebody scores a last minute goal that has a higher uh, you know interest rate to watch than or adrenaline or adventurous feeling rather than watching a normal game where you know the one side is winning way ahead so it's good in a game but when it comes to your personal life you don't want to sacrifice your health at the cost of these adventures so learn to make things way in advance so that you you are learn to be always chilled cool calm comfortable person maybe people might think you are boring but you have no idea how good it is for your emotional health hormonal health and overall well being how to avoid last minute rush this is a very important lesson that everyone learns i wish if everyone learns it will really impact their hormonal health and their nervous system's health as well now first thing is just sit back and understand what are the things that i am expected to do and put a timeline and also understand do i have enough time in between them as well now to give you a best example of to how to avoid last minute rush now let's say uh, i have a meeting and my friend asked me can you reach uh, a you know a hotel or a board room or a meeting place and this is the location and the google map says let's say 45 minutes so instead of saying yes i'll be there in 40 minutes thinking that you will uh, drive like a superstar bollywood hero uh, just say maybe i should be reaching only by 115 put another 20 30 minutes buffer so every time be ruthless in saying no and giving a put some buffer time for yourself so by putting this buffer time you learn to relax yourself and sometimes what happens people understand that you know they have everything in their head but somewhere sometimes they forget to go through the uh, the next day schedule so this is something i have seen Uh, they get up in the morning and realize oh my god i have a meeting and i forgot about this meeting entirely and then they hurry up and they f- maybe skip breakfast and they sit in the traffic and hurry up and reach and then sometimes they try to reschedule the entire thing and sometimes they would have double booked their appointments and they are trying to reschedule the entire thing so the first half of their day it is completely lost in just apologizing rescheduling finding new times and this creates a lot of stress and sometimes this becomes a pattern for people so instead of that always before you go to sleep plan your next day 
and look at every schedule every appointment that you have and in between do you have enough time to rest recover maybe just 5 to 10 minutes and make that 5 to 10 minutes an important time to just rest you know without any distractions from mobile maybe a toilet break maybe a breath deep breath break so just following this you know giving a little more buffer than what is what you think is required let's say according to google maps i have a flight at this point of time my airport uh, destination according to google maps says 1 and 1/2 hours maybe give it 2 hours it's okay to wait for half an hour there get comfortable with waiting and get comfortable with you know spending that time maybe listening to a podcast listening to some good soothing music or reading some book but get into a habit that i reach there way ahead in time and if i have a project i get it done way ahead in time so that you have that buffer to chill and relax so one of the things sometimes people tend to procrastinate and they pile up this last minute rush now actually that last minute rush and procrastination are brothers and sisters because they think they'll be able to perform the best only in last minute so instead of reaching a last minute you put a tactical stress the tactical stress is like i had a friend in school so he had this habit of putting the watch 15 minutes faster and and many people would laugh at him why would that actually make sense but for him it made a lot of difference because he thinks okay i still have some time but at the same time i'm ready for it and when he sees that okay people say you have to show up at the class at 4 o'clock and in his class in his watch he is actually ready by 3:45 but it's just a mental approach it 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 works for some people it completely backfires in some people because they take other 15 minutes as an additional advantage so the point is you put a tactical stress in such a way that let's say my deadline is for 25th so i make the deadline myself for 20th and i stick to it so that way what happens is the deadline will help you to somewhere create a a smart stress which doesn't affect your health but at the same time you have time to go through that buffer period so when you learn to get things way in advance slowly your tendency of procrastination will also reverse so that's how this approach can change